like your screen is going in and out. There we go. Okay. All right. So, um, we did our goal seek here to see different loan options. And then, yeah, you go to the payment table. And this is where we did our data table uh, last week, where we entered in a um, our function, uh, or I guess I should technically say a formula uh, that involved a payment function in the upper left hand corner. And then we had different variables of um, number of months versus different interest rates. Uh, so in this case, this was about uh, making a loan payment, but you could do a data table with any type of uh, information uh, where you had two different variables and you want to see how things change. Uh, so you could use a data table to see what kind of results you would get. All right, let's go to the next one, quarterly cost. Okay, so um, with quarterly costs, one thing you will notice here is it looks like no, there's not many changes. Uh, we did add in one row, but the major changes we did are actually in a, uh, are easier to see in a different spot. We we took some of these and made them uh, names. So we grouped them together. So all the bedded stuff we call bedding costs. And that way we could um, use bedding costs to gather a bunch of information at one time. Same thing with, uh, uh, accessories and with the lighting stuff. So, and one with chairs. So, um, now that we have that information, I'm going to show you where that is. So, um, Sandra, if you can go to the name box, you'll see that those names are already built in there. Uh, select just one of them, doesn't matter which one. And it will select those costs automatically when we have that name selected. Uh, if you could go to the uh, uh, formulas tab. Uh, no, uh, sorry, the formulas tab. Yeah. Um, okay, and click, uh, just click somewhere. Go to the name manager in the define names group. Name manager in, in the define names group. Uh, name manager. You're in the right group. Just go over a little bit to the left. There we go. Okay, so you'll also see all of your names here. Um, and this can show you everything for your entire workbook that you uh, currently have open. And it'll show you where it refers to. Um, so this is a good, a good place to note, uh, especially if you ever get a notebook from someone else, like at a company, um, and you're to do something to it. I tend to go to the name manager first. Um, this way I can look to see, okay, what, what things are predefined and maybe get an understanding of why they predefined them. So that way I can know how, that I can use those later. All right, you can close that. All right, let's go to the annual, uh, I believe that's where I, yeah, we're on the annual cost sheet. So let's go to the annual cost sheet. Okay, so. Now what we're gonna do here is you'll notice it says annual cost for the store. And it has those same names that we had earlier for different types of costs, right? We have bedding, uh, accessories, lighting, and chairs. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're going to utilize the fact that we had those, um, those costs selected and named across uh, multiple roles. We're gonna use that to make it easier to find some totals. Um, you could do this of course with any other function, but we're using totals because we want to find out what the annual cost was for all the bedding stuff. So to do this, if we click on B5, uh, and Sandra, I want you to type equals sum. Uh, and I want you to type it actually. So SUM. And then you can select that sum there if you would like, or you can put parentheses either way. And so it asks for the first number. Well, we already named these guys betting costs. So I want you to type, uh, begin typing betting costs by type B. Okay, you will notice that betting costs comes in that list there. 
So you can select it from there. And now it's already filled in. So you can close that parentheses and hit enter. And it already took the total for all the betting costs for us. So in B6, I want similar, but this time you'll do equal sum. Then um, once you select it or type parentheses, you can type A or accessories or begin to type it out. Yep, and you can see it selected there. Enter and let's go to the next one and do the same for lighting and then for chairs. Oops. And to clarify, you don't actually have to select it from that drop down. It does make it easier, though, a lot of times for people. Um, but you could maybe start typing it, and you'll notice it'll start going, moving itself up to the top of the list. Because uh, when you type stuff, it's uh, searching for close matches. Uh, and so that way, maybe if you're like, oh, I don't know what they called it, but I know it has something to do with bedding, and you type bed, then it would have come up in the list. Um, so that can make it uh, easier for you to do so. So now that that's done, um, what we can do is let's do an auto sum for the total. So if you want to click, yeah, if you want to click auto sum or if you want to do all equals, let's see. Yeah. No, you know, uh, try clicking on just a, uh, try clicking on B9. And just click auto sum. That's a quick thing to point out probably here. So notice that when she selected all of them, um, she uh, just went for an auto sum. And you have noticed many times that you do that and you're able to get your result instantly. So the way auto sum works is it if you have something selected, it looks to see where it should put it. So the issue here was that there was an empty spot above and below. So it was not sure where you wanted the sum to go. Uh, so in this case, when she selected below it, it knew to, since there was nothing there, it knew to look for uh, something to sum around it. So that's why it worked there. So it becomes kind of finicky sometimes. You'll like do it and you'll, you'll realize that, oh, I need to do it this way instead. Uh, so it's up to you um, really to kind of just get a groove with that. But if you see that, like, for instance, how she saw it didn't work, she um, looked like she was going to go start to just do, oh, I'll just go insert the function myself, which, uh, which would have worked as well. But you all have many ways to take sums. That you've uh, that you've learned, so uh, I know you'll you'll get through it. Don't get, but don't panic if you ever see it. Auto sums not working the way I expect it to, because remember Excel is always trying to help you, but it doesn't always get it right. So you have to you have to make sure that it's doing exactly what you want it to. Okay. All right. So now let's make this look a little nicer. Uh, so for B five and B nine. Let's give it a counting number format. Okay, excellent. And then let's uh, make it with no decimals. Excellent. All right. Uh, and for those of you that may be wondering how she did that multi-selection, if you uh, select one, hold control, you can select another one afterwards. So, all right, you can continue. We're going to do comma style for B6 to B8, also in no decimals. Excellent. Okay, so um, now we're going to change a couple of things up. If you go to the, uh, we're actually all done with all of our data manipulation. So now we're just going to handle our uh, page setups. So let's go to payment, uh, the payment table. And if you go to page layout, I want you to change the orientation to landscape. So, yep. Okay. You can click OK. 
So uh, it looked like she was going straight to, I know that we're going to have to horizontally center this. And I know we're also going to do a footer, which we will, but we're going to do it for all of them. And whenever I want to do something for everything, um, that's that's the same. What I like to do is group all my sheets together. So call back to grouping. You right click on the sheet name. She selected all. And so let's go back to that page setup dialog box and let's get to making some changes. All right, we're going to center everything horizontally and we're going to insert a footer on the left side. That's the file name. Just like we usually do. Awesome. You click OK, OK. And um, what we're going to do now is let's go to the backstage view. So remember, that's the same as clicking file. Let's go to info. Yep. And let's add some tags. So our tags for this guy are going to be bedroom category. And then you can do comma. Merchandise cost. Oh. That was all. That was all one thing. Yeah. Which one guys what? Uh, cost. Okay. All right. So now that we have that taken care of, you can, um, you know, we're actually, we're all done with that now, so. You can take a look at them in print preview if you would like to. That way we can um, just kind of see what the pages look like after you get done setting up your author. And one thing that we notice when doing so is that we got this, yeah, this cutoff here for the page, uh, for the payment table, which is kind of strange because if you go back to it, uh, oh, of course. Uh, like if you select payment table, so ungroup the sheets and let's just, yeah, good, that works. Uh, go to orientation. You can go to the one right there too on the right of that, if you want instead. This is the only thing I want to look at, the orientation of it. If we're, I, I saw you click landscape. For some reason, it didn't save that. So click on landscape. And so I noticed that just when we went to print preview, that something didn't look right. You notice how it kind of went, uh, it cut off um, the column for 84. Um, so that was the hint to me that something's not right. Um, but we were able to fix that here just by going and changing it back. So, all right, everything looks good now. So that's actually the end of scripture lecture for 4A. So we looked at, um, we looked at a lot of things. We looked at using the payment function, so um, which is a great useful financial function that I say anyone could use. Um, at some point in life, people are gonna be having something that they have to do payments for or get back. If, if not, then kudos to you living a debt-free life your whole life um, but it's a good you know, a good way for you to kind of before you say you're going to buy a car and you know that you're going to do a loan for it before you go in and say okay how much can i actually afford uh, let's do a goal seat to see what my uh total amount of a loan could be i can go in with this information and of course lowball the uh, guy go a little lower than that to see uh what i can do Yada, yada, yada. Um, same thing with the data table. You can do that as well for a car, or maybe you want to do it for a house loan, uh, for a mortgage. You could uh, enter in a formula so you can see, okay, what interest rate do I want to go for? What's the difference if I do 15 years versus 30 years on my mortgage? Is my dream house something I can actually afford? Uh, then uh, we also looked at. Uh, 
the but yeah, we define names when we did the quarterly merchandise cost stuff um, based off of just a one row, based off a full data, a cell range. Um, we define them using, um, by typing in names, by using the names that are close by to us, uh, about as close to the selection of the range, by like if it's a column header or a row header. Um, and then we also use the names inside of formulas in order to uh, do some evaluations. So. That's all 4A. Are there any questions about 4A? Are there any questions about 3G, which is once again, that's due on Friday. Okay. Will you have videos on Canvas? Uh, yes. Oh, uh, wait, uh, you mean like these videos? Um, I will not have them on Canvas because I didn't have any more room uh, for, for storage um, and they can't give me any more. So that's what I need to do. Uh, I will try to put them on YouTube and add links in the Canvas uh, because that does not take up. Um, it does not take up much memory or technically any because it's just a page link. Um, so I'll have to do that. Um, I'll have to get all my videos off of WebEx and try to do that. I need to watch the one. Okay, I do email them to you all. Um, so if you go back and look at your emails for me, they, they will be called CIS114DE. Uh, and then they'll have some number, some cardinal number and uh, recording. Um, so like if you go last, the last one was the 13th recording, I believe. So let's say CIS 114DE 13th recording. I'll have some message and then I'll have a link for you to so you can watch the video. So if you look at any of those, uh, yeah. All right, what you need. All right, well, in that case, we can take a look at 4B if you all would like, um, or we can call it early, it's up to you. Uh, to be honest, because I know we are, to finish this, we would still be one week ahead which is not bad uh, to me. So it's completely up to y'all. What would you prefer to do? Keep going and do 4B or hold things early. Oh, she's already got it open. So I, I guess we're, uh, Guess we're going for four B. All right. Is it okay to be open? That's 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 fine. That's fine with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I just feel I'm one of just wanting to ask you all before we just jump right into it because I don't I don't want to overwhelm you either with information, um, in case you're still working on three. So, okay. All right. Uh, all right. Well. Got it open. Go ahead and make your save to um, whatever you would like to call it. Yeah. The paper I gave you says for it to be called Internet Form, but it's honestly completely up to you. So when you turn it in, I'm just going to look at it. Okay, does this look right? Yes, no. All right. So uh, what we're looking at here, oops. Yeah, yeah, this is a great one. All right, so what we are looking at 
here for 4b uh, is I'm kind of going to make a a form, so to speak, where someone can like order something. So it says oh, it says on their internet order form. Um, you can also think of it as like uh, back in the day, if someone like was a call in an order, um, like oh, I want to order some chairs and some bedding sheets and blah blah, blah or whatever. I, I, this is kitchen product, so those things wouldn't be on there. Um, but yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna set this up so it'll be a nice easy form. Because imagine like right now you would have to know off the top of your hand all of these different products uh, item numbers, uh, their descriptions off the top of your head and match the item numbers and then each unit price. I mean, it's possible if it's a small business that you may and you only have to sell a couple items, you may be able to do this. However, that's a lot, right? So, and let's just say this was like a franchise. There's no way you'd be able to do that. So uh, we're gonna make things a little easier for them and we're gonna help them out by making a form. So that way they could very easily click for uh, whatever it is they're looking for. So. What we're going to do is uh, let's first go to the product information sheet tab. And what you notice here is we have a list of all our kitchen products. And so they have their style codes, they have their descriptions, and they have the unit prices all set up. Right. So um, what we can do with this is we could use this kind of as like a dictionary lookup, so to speak. So that way, whenever you're on the internet form, you can tell it to go to um, like, hey, I got this style code, go and pull in the information for the description and the unit price. Um, some of you may remember these things like, it was like Neiman Marcus used to send out in Christmas, uh, these like huge books uh, that had all these toys and things that you could buy. Uh, and so I remember my my aunt and my mom used to give uh, each of us like the book and we would have to circle and put our name by stuff that we wanted. Uh, so that way they could uh, um, like see what, what, what we wanted and make decisions on what to get us for Christmas and stuff like that. Uh, well, in each one of those, there was a there was a style code. And so they would literally, uh, if they wanted to order it, they would have to call the store and give them the style code. They would give them the code they wouldn't tell them like, oh, I want the new giant teddy bear or whatever, because um, that's the description. They got tons of those, like which one did you want specifically? So the style code is what they would actually give them. Uh, and then the rest of the order form and everything else could fill out on its own. So it's kind of what we're doing here. We're, we're building that for, um, for Hannah's home accessories. So um, what I want you to do is let's select um, A4 to C11. Because before we do this, we need to we need to make this a little easier to um, manipulate. So A4 to C11. Excellent. And so what we need to manipulate is this stuff is not in a strict order. Um, notice the style codes go D and T and T and D D and T and T, uh, and the numbers aren't even in uh, are aren't even ordered. So Let's let's sort this some way to make this a little easier. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sort this. So to sort, we're going to go to the data tab. So for some of you, this may be the first time you're seeing sort. We're going to do a couple of sorts um, in this one, and we'll see some next week as well. So if you click on sort in the sort and filter group, yes, um, you will notice that. So don't click anything yet. But what you'll notice is that your selection has changed. It changed to A5 to C11 instead of uh, a4 to c11 that's because remember excel's trying to help you and it said hey there's some text up here up top it even has a different style cell style so this is probably some type of data headers and if you'll notice in the right corner of the sort dialog box it says my data has headers so since the data has headers it's checked it's saying that those are the column headers which they are and by doing that it actually will make it easier for us because you'll notice that there's a column section and where it says sort by those headers, if you click that drop down for sort by, those column headers are now here. So it's using those to help us decide what column to sort. 
So we're actually going to sort by the style codes because that's the first one in the list, and that's what people would give us if they were to use the Internet Order form. Yep. And we're going to sort on the cell values, and we're going to do this from A to Z. So, so it's already set for yep cell values. And for A to Z, so it's all set up. Now we'll see later on that we can add more levels of sorting. So we'll say we if things if uh, two things had the same like style code and then we wanted to sort by another level, we could do that. But in this case, each style code is unique, so we're all set. So you can go in and click OK. All right. So now this is uh, in a good order um, by style code. So I can very easily say if they say D, I know to look at the first three, and they say L2. I know to put mixing bowls in and then move on. Okay, so um, now that we have that set up, let's go back to the internet order form. And in cell A9, our first item, A9, mm -hmm. let's type in capital T-04, which was one of those style codes that we saw earlier. Okay, so press tab. We're gonna go to look at we're gonna go to the description. So we already set it up so that that whole thing on the product information sheet was uh was sorted, easy to look at, easy for it to do a search on, right? Because the style codes are in alphabetical order. And so because that has been done, what we can do is we can use a formula known as a uh it's a lookup formula. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh actually I'll have you do it the wizard way first. So we'll go to the formulas tab. And let's go to uh, click on in, in in the function library group, click on lookup and no no click on lookup and references. Yes. Okay. Scroll all the way down to V lookup. V lookup. Yep. All right. So uh, what this does is it does a vertical lookup. So it'll go look up a certain value and you tell it where to look it up at. So like where's the table that has the things, uh, the information that this should be on. And then it will vertically search for what you said to look for. So vertical means going up and down. So if you remember the product information sheet had uh, all our style codes listed in a vertical list. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to look it up that way. Um, so for the lookup value, let's uh, select A9 or type A9, however you want to do it. And then for the table array, click on the product information sheet and select A4 to C11. At the same at the same table. Yep. yep. Okay. Yes. A, A, A4. A4. To C11. C11. Okay. Yeah. And so before you go to the next one, I want you to make A4 and C11 absolute references. Okay. So uh, I think it's like that. Okay. Do it for A and four as well. Okay. Of course, some of you that are watching this video, you may use F4 if your F4 key is working appropriately. Yeah, uh, on the on the four as well. All right, excellent. Now you can click on column index number yeah so uh, oh sorry it so um the column index number is saying what which column did you want this to uh look at in that table so um for column no you, you uh you had no, right? yeah that, that part's right yeah okay so but the column index number wants to know which uh column to go to you may remember that the description was in the second column so just put the number two here two yes and if you weren't sure about that, if you look just to the right of a uh, table array, you'll see it says style code, description, and unit price. Mm -hmm. 
So see, the description is the second one. So that's how I know there's a two there. Well, here. Mm -hmm. And then range lookup, if you put your cursor in range lookup, um, the description will tell you that it is a logical value to find the closest match um, in ascending order if it's sorted. So uh, I, I use this blank unless I just want to find something close. Okay. Uh, if you want an exact match, you could type false in here, but by default, it automatically will be false. So we don't have to worry about that. But let's just say in, if you ever were doing something with a, 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 a lookup, V or H lookup or just lookup, um, you would and you wanted it to find the closest thing to whatever it is you told it to search for, then you would have to put range lookup equal to true, okay? So that's just something to um, keep in mind. So notice also that we get a formula result that we see um, to the bottom there. It says salt and pepper shakers. So we expect salt and pepper shakers to come out of this. So we can click OK. We got a little salt and pepper shakers. If you wanted to check to make sure this is doing things correctly, we could go to the product information sheet. And notice that T-04 T is salt and pepper shakers. So therefore, this is working correctly. Excellent. Okay. So um, let's go to, yeah. Mm -hmm. So on um, B9, now that we have this on, so on, on B9, so one, the, yes, let's use the fill handle to copy that on down to B18. Because our formula is pretty much set up, right? It just has to decide what's in, uh, yeah. It just has to know what's in A in order to calculate uh, what the description would be. And so we see some errors that come up. So remember, we have, uh, oh, we'll actually talk about more about error handling. Um, actually, maybe it's today. At some point, so it's coming up. Um, so actually, I think it's today. Um, so the hashtags, uh, which I was confirmed that it's, it would still they're still called hashtags nowadays. I was used to pound sign back in my day, but the hashtags are your way of knowing that Excel says there's an error here. Now you have seen some before, like we have a bunch of them, and that the quote unquote error was just that there was a column width error. If you weren't able to you weren't able to visually see everything you needed to. Um, the green triangle is an indicator as well in the upper left-hand corner that there is an error here. We know what this error is. It says NA because it's, it can't calculate um, the lookup because it has nothing in the, course, the corresponding um, A cell in order to do a calculation. It has nothing to look up. So that's fine. We understand that. Um, and so sometimes there, there are those times where you're, as I mentioned, Excel is trying to help you, but this is one of those times where it's like, you know what, it's okay for us to have an error here uh, because we know that when we type things into the item number, it'll go look it up later. All right, so now that that's all settled in, uh, let's see. Let's auto fit uh, column B. The shaker just looking a little long. All right, cool. And then let's click cell C9. So in this case, let's type in 12. You're going to order 12 salt and pepper shakers. Okay. I hope that's like six pairs and they're not getting 24. That's a lot. They need 24 pairs or 24 uh, different cartridges. That's a lot. Anyway, uh, unit, uh, so after that, uh, let's go to the unit price or you can press tab, however you want to get there. And we're going to do something very similar. We're going to do uh, a V lookup because the unit price is also on the product information table. So, or on that product information sheet. Um, so let's do a V lookup. So if you want to use, uh, we can type it this time if you would like. So let's do equals V lookup. Okay. And it says the lookup value. So you can click on A9 or type A9. A9. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Comma. It says table array. And so if you recall, the table array was in the product information sheet. So we can go down to the product information sheet. And we can select A4 to C11.
A4 to C11. Okay, comma. Uh, actually, before you do that, can you press F4 on yours? Don't don't click it. Don't click on internet. Don't click internet order. Uh, <clears throat> if you can press F4, notice how in the formula bar it made your stuff absolute references. So you can do it from there. Uh, press comma though. Press comma. Okay. Um, and then what column do we want? Well, the unit price is in column three. As you can see on this picture, it's in the third column. So you can type three. Okay, and then you can press enter. So I stopped you from clicking on internet order because if you had, then it would have changed uh, the table array to be internet order from A4 to C11, which there is no table array here. So re uh, remember that whenever you're entering a uh, a cell reference from another sheet, if you go click back onto a different sheet, it's going to change that. So you got to be very careful with that. Okay. But your unit price is all set up. We got fifteen dollars, which we expected to see. Um, so you can copy down that um, fifteen. The, uh, the unit price. Uh, yeah, the unit price. We can fill handle that down onto D18. All the way to D18. So once again, we get NAs, but that's because there's nothing for it to look up. So let's go to cell uh, A10. Let's start adding some things to see how this world this is working. So we're going to order, uh, I'm, I'm going to call in, da -da -da -da. I would like style order D-07. And then you can press tab. Notice how, or enter, okay. Uh, notice how we got cookbook and we got $8. So how many cookbooks do I want? Go to quantity, please. And I'm going to order 24 cookbooks. I swear they're not all for me, they're for friends and family. All right, cool. Notice how in order amount, if you actually go click on order amount in uh, E, sorry, yep. it is already doing C times D. We didn't set this up. This is already preset on this um, order form, but that makes sense, right? Um, the, uh, the amount that you're going to pay for this portion of the order is how many you're buying times how, many, how much they cost each. Um, you'll also notice if you look at E19, E19, that there's nothing there. However, we it says total. So that means at some point in time, we will need to uh, add a total here, right? So that way it knows, it knows what the total is. So um, we'll do that once we make some more modifications because maybe we don't want this big of an order form. So let's go um, back to, product information, because this is working great, right? The only difference is we have to type in each one of these uh, style codes to start off. Well, it gets kind of big, uh, tedious, and then you got to, like, hope they set the style code right, you know, and what if they give you a wrong one and you type it in, nothing comes up? Um, well, we can help. We can help, help with that. So if you would, please select A4 to A11. Because these are all our style codes, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna make a new name for these. So if you remember names, um, they're we're, they're already on the form of the tab where we already are. Let's go to the define names group and click on create from selection. No, 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 no. Create from selection. Yeah, and the only reason I'm telling you that is because it'll make this go a little faster. So it says create names from values, um, and we're gonna use the name style code, which is the top of this column, right? Um, so it should say top row. Yeah, Good. you can click okay, because that's on the top row style code is. All right, cool. So that means style code is now a predefined name. So because it's a predefined name, 
if I want to refer to things in it, I can use the name to do so. So let's go back to the internet order form. I want you to select A9 to A18. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell these um, item cells to only be, allow style code. Okay, and so to do this, we're going to do something that's known as data validation. And so data validation is in the data tab. It is in the data tools group. So remember, groups are named at the bottom. So look for data tools. Cool. Now data validation. Yep. So we're going to do, hey, princess. We're going to do uh, data validation. And so what this does, it literally is going to say, OK, you just entered something in. Is this the correct form? Is it one of these choices that the uh, creator said it had to be? OK, so it's a really uh, it's a really cool tool to use. So um, make sure the settings have it selected. OK, cool. So we're on the settings tab and under the validation criteria. It says any value. So right now they can enter in anything. We don't want them to enter in anything, right? We know we know how humans are. Um, we all make mistakes. So we're gonna do a list. So you see it says list, yeah. And we're gonna tell them what that list is. So in source, if you would um, click and type, no, not there. Just like uh, yeah, cursor. Yep. Equals style. With a capital S underscore code with a capital C. Where did I get that from? Well, that's what we just named it, right? But it said style code. There was no underscore. Well, whenever you name something, it has to be one word. And so what Excel does is when it uses that create from selection it saw that there was a space there and so it added an underscore to represent that space okay all right so you can so actually let's talk about this uh real quick so what we just told it was that anytime someone enters something in the cell it it, it is it has to be something that's in a list and the list gets its information from style code okay so we are allowing a list and the source is the style code Notice that there are two check mark uh, check boxes up there too. One says to ignore blanks. So which in this case it makes sense to ignore blanks, right? They're filling out an order form. If they have if they don't have something there, we don't want it to freak out at them saying you need to enter something in this because this can't be blank. That's what that would do. If that was unchecked, every time there was a blank there, they would get yelled at. Um, the second one is an incel drop down, which is really powerful. What that means is they'll get a drop down list. Uh, so if they're not sure what to type in. Don't worry, they can click the drop down and see what's available. All right, so let's click OK. And let's check it out. Okay. All right, so if you click on A11, notice we get a little drop down. So I'm not sure what to put, put next, so I'm just going to click on that. All right, here's a D05. That seems like a, a cool number and letter. D05. When we do so, notice that description automatically changes because it has something to reference. We get a peeler, and the unit price automatically changes to nine because that's how much peeler costs. So let's go over to uh, C11. And I'm going to order 18 peelers. Okay, $162. All right, let's go to A12. This time, um, you can type type in T-01. OK, and then you can press tap. What does it say? What does it say? Don't, don't, don't just click X. We got to read it. Anytime you get an error, you should read it. It says the value doesn't match the data validation restrictions defined for this cell. So what does that mean? The value that we enter is not available. It cannot be used. It failed the validation test. 
So uh, you can click cancel. So honestly, I spent enough money right now. So let's, uh, well, yeah, actually you can click on drop down just so you all can see that T-01 was not in this list, right? Okay. All right, cool. So select, uh, or actually, yeah, select row 12 to 18. Like the full on row, row 12. Uh, like the actual row. So in the row headers to the left of that. I'm sorry, I don't understand. What you said? Uh, I want you to select row 12 through 18. Yeah, so like click on the actual 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, 12 to 18. Uh, no, no. Uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So actually click on the yeah. number. Yep, yeah, just like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the reason I want you to select uh select those up uh is because we're gonna delete them. So I want you to delete those rows now. So you can do so by right clicking on the uh, row headers or going to the home tab and clicking delete. Yeah, cool. So in doing so, I did that because I was done ordering. Uh, but now we need to make a total, right? So in E12, if you could uh, put the total in there, that'd be great. So I can know how much I gotta pay. Is it AutoSum? Yeah, honestly, you can use AutoSum, however you want to do it. <laughs> AutoSum is on the home tab if you want, yeah. 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 I know you love AutoSum, I can tell, because you, you use it a lot. Mm -hmm. Good? Yep, that's good. I got to pay $534. Dollars. Yeah, a lot for these kitchen appliances. All right, or excuse me, accessories, not appliances. Um, all right. Well, now that my paycheck is blown, let's move on to the revenue sheet. All right. Any questions as we move forward about what we just did? Okay. So, honestly, I feel like the things that are, are in module four are probably the most helpful to your life. Um, like the the stuff that we did with the uh, loan payments to see what your monthly payments would look like, how you can create a data table so you can see how things can be different um, based off number of months and interest rates. Um, how to do, how to uh, do goal seek so you can get towards a certain goal. Um, and then what we just did with the validations sheet um, there was someone on campus, I was helping with something and they, they wanted to do something like that. And they're like, I just want it to be a drop down list. Is there a way to do that? And I was like, yeah, we can do a validation. Um, and they actually ended up taking the Excel class after that, after I showed them that. Um, but that was something they still use it. Like they said that that was the main thing they got, um, uh, from the class was, uh, that, that it was that. And then what we'll do in, um, what we'll do in module five. Um, but everyone has different things that they like about what we go through. So but I, I do feel like this week is probably the most useful. Um, it touches the most things in like in life that someone could use stuff for. Speaking of, next we're gonna audit a sheet. So I actually just mentioned that uh, about auditing. And I said, I think it was in this one actually, and it is. Um, so what does it mean to audit? Let's start with there, with that. So to audit something, I mentioned this I think last time, uh, but when you audit, something you look at everything that's there to make sure that it's correct everything's in order so an auditor may come into a company and say i need to see all your books well you could have an auditor that comes in your company and says i need to see all your excel work uh all your excel workbooks for your entire company and yes they go through everything sometimes when an auditor comes in um they announce they're coming and so the company can get everything together make it a little easier for them um but i have uh when i was at uh Meditech, we had we had our own auditor um, that was a Meditech em employee, uh, which is legal. Um, they have they follow certain rules and they have uh, different people they report to um, because they don't they can't work directly for the company so to speak because then they have a conflict of interest uh, possibly. And so, but what they would do is they would literally randomly decide I need to check your computer for stuff. I need to see what you've been doing. 
and that's what they would do. Uh, so they would check on like uh, employee work. They would check on um, code that we had created, make sure that we had uh, documentation on what it was used for and how it was to be used. Make sure there was appropriate amount that it was understandable to someone that didn't know uh, programming, which was funny because they didn't know programming. Um, and after a while, I was like, but by, by, like just every year, at some point in time, they should probably like know how to how to program because they look at everyone's code. That's that that but yeah, it was, it was actually very interesting. It, it got me to um, it, it really helped me understand the reason why you need to document your description. So, but anyway, I'm going too far. Um, but yes, so that's what an auditor does. So I mentioned before there is a um, conglomerate. I think I forgot what their like little acronym is. I could actually look it up, but there's a uh, a group of people that look at Excel spreadsheets to find out what the errors are. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Let's see what it's called. I can't. No, I can't find it. Uh, man, I wish I could find it. Remember the name of it, because it's kind of funny if just you look at their website, because uh, they talk talk about how many um um how many like uh, Excel spreadsheets a year have mistakes that they see, um, and it's it's in the millions, like it is a crazy amount um and they actually all they do is sit and like you can pay them money to go and audit your uh, excel spreadsheets for you for your companies um and they they'll they'll go through it and they'll find all these issues and then they'll actually sometimes give you suggestions on how to fix uh, how to fix it but they say they have people that give uh remember i, I think i mentioned how um you can have a certain like there's a thousands thousands of rows or columns that you have and there's like in the millions of rows Millions of rows make sense, but it doesn't make sense to have that many columns. Well, they get those, they'll, they'll have people that will have like three rows and have thousands of columns for three rows. And they're like, no, you can't do this. You need to transpose this, like move it the other direction. It'll make more sense. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's actually quite funny. But anyway, there are a lot of cool things that you can do as an auditor, especially once you get your Excel skills up. So, um, Let's see how we can begin to audit this sheet. And then we will finish up the audit on um, Tuesday. All right, so to begin, um, we could probably see that we have a couple of things that are errors. And this is where most people would start at. So uh, remember errors are denoted by those hashtags or pound signs. Um, and then you can see some green triangles as well. Uh, other things to denote, from looking at this sheet that could possibly be errors would be why are there blanks right this, this should be filled out already hannah's home accessories this is all of their stuff that they've uh they've bought they have totals the expenses and overheads and all that that should be taken care of that should be written in here why is it missing well someone probably didn't get a chance to fill it out so we're gonna we're gonna make these uh sections and stuff um so that we could have a appropriate excel work uh workbook um, so that we could uh, claim this information and make sure that they're uh, up and up company. So, um, um, one thing that I have you all do in the, uh, I guess we'll do it now, just that way you can see it. So if you go to the backstage view, we're gonna open up Excel options. So towards the bottom, you'll see options. On the, oh no, you're on you're, you're the right place, but just keep going down. Keep going down. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, options. So that's Excel options. It'll bring up the Excel options dialog box. And so there's a couple things on here you can change. Uh, you can customize your ribbon here. You could customize the ribbon so, um, so specifically that you can decide what commands are on there. I've mentioned before how, um, um, like if you're at your certain job or if you use a certain number of, uh, like commands a lot, you can honestly create your own uh, tab uh, from here like under customized ribbon, and then you could add in the commands that you most commonly use. You could form them into your own groups. And uh, sometimes people do that for certain jobs. Um, I know for 
my job as when we're doing scheduling and doing things uh, with the scheduler um, and with student contact information, uh, we actually have that. Uh, someone created a tab for us to use. So we have a custom ribbon uh, and that's what we use because it has all the functions and things that we would possibly need all on one spot instead of having to click around. So, um, but there's other things, other options that you can change here. Uh, we're gonna click on formulas. So in the left area, if you click on formulas. Yeah. Okay, and so from here, you'll see a section, each of the sections are in like little gray boxes. Um, you'll see a section that says error checking. So it's at the bottom there, yeah. You got error checking, and then you have error checking rules. So uh, error checking, it says enable background checking, which that's, that's why we have those triangles and the hashtags come up. And then error checking rules, here are all the rules that it looks for um, when defining an error, okay? So um, notice how the only thing unchecked, and I'm gonna, I, I would leave it unchecked, is the formulas returning empty cells. Because let's say a formula gets calculated and it's like, oh, the answer is nothing, and the answer should be blank. It should stay blank. So that's why that's that's, that's why that's like uh, Microsoft understands that upon startup, probably what you want. Um, but if you're wanting to change that, like if you expect for every formula you enter to come um, uh, retrieve blanks, then you could have that checked so that it would know. Uh, for instance, in this case, um, this probably would have been nice to have that check because then those blanks would have shown up as, hey, these should be filled out. So you can click. Oh, uh, you can click on cancel because there's nothing here we, we need uh, need to change. I just wanted to point this out in case you in your own life you ever needed to change error checking rules. You can click cancel. Okay, cool. So I just got a warning that I am getting a connectivity error. So if I get kicked out, everyone, have a have a good weekend. Um, but for now, let's uh, let's start with the. Probably the simplest one you see in column E. I love, I love how she went to there. Um, the simplest one is in column E uh, because it has all of those uh, hashtags there. We we know at this point what that means. This error, quote unquote error, is that we can't see everything. So how would you correct it? Let's see what you do. I'm gonna see what you do. How would you correct this? Because we can't see everything. What's something that you would do so that you can make sure you see everything? Uh, well, no. If we did that, then we could change, we would be changing possibly what it looks like. See, right, it gives a value. We can even see it on the screen tip. We just can't see everything because the column is too small. So what could you do then? Yeah. Yep, double click that sucker. And now we can see everything. Okay. So if you see that, that, hash, uh, that hashtag like that with a bunch of them, then the column width just needs to be adjusted. So do exactly what she did. You can just auto fit it and it's good to go now. All right, sounds like a good start. Let's see what other errors we got here. Oh, uh, do you have one in H2? Yeah, fix that, fix that guy. Boom, now we can see so much better. Okay, now we have an issue with, um, let's, let's start with, uh, let's start with the ones up top that actually have values, but they have those green triangles. Because uh, the one these these other hashtag ones no let's start with C nine start with C nine because the other ones could uh, the other ones can be a little more difficult but these if you ever see a value there and you still see an error with the green triangles that's not a good thing because that means Excel is actually this in this time when you see stuff like this usually Excel is in my experience Excel is wrong because what this is is saying that the formula that you have here doesn't seem quite correct based off of the fact that I see numbers in other places, okay? So I always like to look at these uh, because they could be right. Excel could be right. I could have made a mistake. Uh, maybe like in this case, this is a sum. Maybe I'm not summing everything like I thought it was going to. Maybe I typed in the wrong cells when I started it. So uh, if you actually look in the uh, formula bar, you notice it's going from C6 to C8. Is that what you would expect it to be? No. Where would you expect it to go? Uh, it should come from 
I think it's C4 to C8. Yes, it should. And so yeah. we already know this, so we could we could go ahead and just make that change, right? You could change that six to a four. Okay. Okay. And then you, yeah. And then you can click enter. All right. All right. Or press it. All right. So let's go back. You know, select select C um select C nine again. So I want you to go to the formulas tab because uh there are some tools uh the formulas tab. Not the formula bar, but the formulas tab. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So there are some tools in here that will help us when uh, when auditing. So in the formula auditing group. Formula auditing. Group. Yeah. So remember, groups are named at the bottom. Okay. So formula auditing. Yep. Yeah. Um. There. These these commands here will help us a lot. So go click on trace precedence. One one trace yeah. trace precedence. Mm -hmm. So what that means is precedence come, means before. Uh, dependence are are things that it that, that depend on the result, but precedence are the ones that come before it. So in this case, it says, "Hey, hey, uh, for C nine, you'll notice you get that blue arrow. It's saying it's it it is calculated based off of all of those above it." And so which is correct now that you already corrected it, but this is one way we could tell. So if you were to um, click on uh, D9. B? Yeah, uh, D9. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, D as in dog. D9. Yeah, you get, notice that, uh, so click on trace precedence there. Okay. Notice that it is also starting from six. Mm -hmm. So that probably happened. We probably entered in um, we probably entered in uh, the one for C and then copied it over. That's probably what happened. So so go ahead and yeah, you can make the change to this to four. Okay. Mm -hmm. And press enter. And then I would click on E and then F to see if they have the same thing. Because if they do, we can just fill handle it over. So yeah, and then click on F, F9. Yeah, so pretty much all of these guys got screwed. So let's just go to uh, D9 since you already have that one fixed. D9? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then let's just fill handle it uh, over those other ones. So over to H. Mm -hmm. So all of those now got corrected. Oh no, we got a new error though. I fix that one. Oh. All right, so that if if you ever see a bunch of those hashtags like that, all that means is that the column width needs to be adjusted. Yeah. So just go click on the column uh, thing and double click that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the that error should be the one you get used to seeing and used to fix the most, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, let's see. All right, H5, yeah, that's the next one, right? Cool, so let's click on H5. And we'll click on trace precedence so we can see what, what's used to calculate it. Oh, wow. Somehow it got down to eight. <laughs> it's doing B8 to G, the G8. All right, I don't know how that happened, uh, but um, click on the little uh, sign, the di diamond with the exclamation point coming out at it. Yeah, click on that guy. Okay, so it says inconsistent formula. Notice it says copy formula from above. Click on that, click on copy formula from above. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the formula above it and copy it down. In this case, I would click trace precedence again, just to check to make sure it did what, it, what we thought it should do. And it did, it corrected it, okay? So sometimes, once again, Excel trying to help you, it gave us the correct way to correct it too, right? With the copy from above. So, um, cool. And so, um, one thing that we'll notice though is that when it copied from above, it also copied its formatting, and this should be a comma style, right? So if you go to the home, uh, click, uh, click on uh, H5. And let's go to home tab, and we're gonna change it cell style. 
So go to go to style, cell styles, and select comma zero at the bottom there. Commas or at the top, comma no, no, the one from the bottom actually. Comma zero. Bottom. Bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what does that do? Comma zero is the same thing as what you all were doing when you did uh comma style with zero decimals. Okay. So yes, it is so commonly done that it's already built into Excel as a, as its own separate uh, style. So that's something else to note. I don't usually use that. I usually just do the comma anyway, and then decide how many decimals I want, uh, regardless of it already being there. That's, that's me. You all want to start using that? You can, because it works just fine. As you can tell, it works the same. Um, all right. So now that we got that all settled. Uh, click on H4. Okay, notice it's going from B4 to C. Let's go back to the uh, formulas tab. Formulas tab, yep. And click on trace precedence again. And do the same for H5, H6, H7, H8, H9. Right, let's keep doing that. We're just checking it to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. What? Excel didn't tell us that this would possibly be an error, but it totally is, isn't it? Do you remember Excel is always trying to help you, but does it mean that it gets it right? It didn't tell us about this error, so we need to fix that guy, right? I would check H8 too, just to make sure. H8, because we know we have to fix, we know we have to fix uh, H7, but let's check H8 too to see. Oh, what is going on? All right, so we need to fix these last two. So good thing is um, H7 is working correctly, right? H7 is working now, right? So we can just click on H7. Oh, sorry, not H7, H6 is working. Sorry about that. H6 is working, so we can just drag it down to H8. Well. So how about this? Uh, click on remove arrows. They might be in the way. Mm -hmm. Try it now. Yeah. Cool. So everything got fixed there. And, and the best thing to honestly do would be to go to each of the totals on the revenue in the totals there, uh, the totals column, and click trace precedence to make sure that they're correct. Uh, I know they are at this point because I know where the errors are. Um, but that's what you would do if you were an actual auditor. You would go through each one of those, uh, just like we did, because Excel may not catch all of them. Okay. I think that's a great stopping point for now. We'll look at dependence next time and finish out the rest of this workbook on Tuesday. All right. Any questions before we go? All right, in that case, I'll start recording.